And we are live on a Toy Tuesday. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, whoever's here bright and early, ready to go. Starship Troopers. Now, well, first of all, hello, everyone. Welcome. Hopefully, everyone is doing well. It's Tuesday. Oh, yes. Yeah, super fancy. Hi. Starship Troopers, 1959, a little bit, a little bit of a different era. <gasps> Panda, you order trick or treat? I okay. So I, I, I'm a horror guy. Maybe not as much as Cameron or some, you know, some other people, but I love horror movies. Trick or treat is is like genuinely a really fun, entertaining movie. Uh, it has some great. Yeah, I, 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 I think people are going to like it. I think you'll like it. I really like it, at least. So Starship Troopers. Now, you may be thinking, Scott, you've only been streaming since the beginning of this pandemic. You're repeating content already? All right. I have shown off some Starship Troopers toys before. But for today, I had an inspiration to go and pull out all of my Starship Troopers toys. Uh, there's only one I can't find, but I'll talk about that. And then I went and got pictures of some of the other stuff that's out there that I don't have, which is not much. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think this is going to be cool. So the novel, 1959, like I said, a, a little bit of a, a different world. There, I mean, this book has been reprinted so many times. There are a million different covers, so you may be familiar with other versions than this one. Uh, it's it's a it's a short novel. It's even in this size, it is barely two hundred pages, two hundred and seven. Hey Zenblade, welcome. Uh, it's interesting. I people some people have a lot of issues with this novel about how it it's complicated in how it looks at military service and whether that is a positive thing or a negative thing and how that relates to your role in society and how citizenship can be tied to military service and all sorts of stuff like that. It's complicated. It's um, no matter where you fall on any of those sort of discussions and thoughts, it's an interesting work to read and discuss. Now, there's also some really cool tech in this book. Uh, more of you, I'm sure, are familiar with the Starship Troopers movie yeah so the movie the movie took a lot of ideas from this book and sought to uh present them to an, a more audience more modern audience in various degrees of success uh various degrees of parodying sort of like ultra how do I even want to describe it? Like ultra pro military kind of stuff. And yeah. Anyway, but what the movie did give us was some really cool bug designs. So that's good. Uh, the tech, the human tech in the movie was woefully lacking when it came to humanity's like basic stuff. Again, in the, in the book, they're wearing super advanced power armor which obviously was not in the movie they didn't have the but they've talked about this they didn't have the budget to create it on screen they've added it a little bit to some of the later sequels and then definitely in the anime movies so if you want to see some of those designs check you can check out that uh but there were some really cool spaceships in the movie so that's good <laughs> well rabid wombat i hope you enjoy your lunch so let's talk about toys from now again most of the toys that we're going to be looking at today are from the movie specifically because that's just that's just what we got so in 97 let's see 97 i believe all of these toys are from let me double check that so galoob had the license to make toys based on the movie now you may not be super familiar with the with the toy company Galoob, but it is a classic. They're not around anymore. They got devoured up by uh, Hasbro mostly. 
So Galoob made action figures, they made vehicles, Galoob made Micro Machines. Now, Micro Machines, I'm sure most, if not all of you have heard of. Uh, micro, machine, micro Machines were made by, like I said, Galoob, then Hasbro. Uh, more recently now, Micro Machines are with, uh, is it Jax? I don't know. So anyway, there, there are new Micro Machines out now, but through a different company. So 1997, we got, yeah, Micro Machines. Oh my God, Micro Machines. Yeah, huge. So good. So 1997, a series of toys. Now, there were action figures. I do not have any of them. The action figures made for Starship Troopers were terrible. Let me show you some examples. And I don't know the full story about these action figures, whether they were repurposed designs that were from some other property uh because they i mean i guess you could say they're sort of starship trooper e but not really they're just they're just bad they're not good Again, like that's that gun that Rico's holding, like that's not a Morita from the movie at all. Yeah, yeah, they're they're trash. <laughs> it's not good. Uh, let's see if I grab another picture. Yeah, here's another one. They're just big and bulky, and obviously you can see the articulation is terrible. Uh they don't the, yeah, they don't look like the movie design. Like I said, I, I have a feeling these were molds they made for something else. And we're like, oh, we should just use these to make quote-unquote Starship Troopers action figures. So yeah, I didn't buy any of those. Oh, come on. You're going to let me... What happened here? No, not going to let me remove that. Hmm. Okay, let me try that a different way. There we go. Sorry, Streamlabs is being a little fussy. Yeah, but like I said, they're, they're clearly clearly these are terrible. <laughs> Okay, go away. All right, but what was good were the bugs. So first off, in the smallest scale, now they did multiple scales, which we'll talk about. So these are technically, well, they were done in micro machine scale. So these came out in little packs where you would get three bugs and or vehicles and then you get a bunch of itty bitty teeny tiny troopers. Now, somewhere, somewhere in a box buried like at the end of Indiana Jones, I have a whole big bag of the little tiny Starship Troopers troopers. I can't find them. <laughs> and I apologize. I have them somewhere. And they are sort of in scale with these, but... <clears throat> Not really. As you'll see, they're, the, the bugs vary so much in size. In each specific scale, it's not really, they couldn't really make the full, the full range. So anyway, so these are the itty bitty ones. And these are freaking fantastic. Just loads of detail, great sculpt, great paint jobs on these little toys. That doesn't melt your face off. Thankfully, thankfully it does not. So we've got the warrior bug. We've got the hopper bug. Bright metallics on there. Jump down and eat things. Yeah, and again, I mean, these toys are from 97 and they still look fantastic. We have what is my favorite, the tanker bug. And again, you can see that like we're losing scale rapidly because this bug is much larger than the the standard bug, and it's uh, it's, it's the toy is smaller. We even have you got the eyes, the little legs underneath. Uh, 
the plasma bug, their long range artillery bug. Some actually nice, some nice detail in there. And then yes, there was a, a pack that had, I forget what they call this. It was kind of like a shield bug or something. But essentially these are the these are the little bugs that protect the brain. And then yes, there is a little brain bug. And the neat thing about this was that it could ride on the back of one of these. There's a little little tiny peg and a little hole so it can sit on top and it can cuz I think in the movie the brain bug was was it came out like on a hole on a carpet of these. I think you briefly saw that before Carl went up and talked to it. But yeah, this thing was gross appropriately. Got that weird face with all the eyes. It sucked his brains out. So this is the line of bugs in the micro machine scale, again, give or take. And like I said, all of these packs came with a bunch of little troopers that were sort of usable in the scale, but Specifically, though, they were for the larger scale, which I'll get to in just a second. Because the other great thing about these little guys is not only were there bugs, not only were there little tiny, tiny figures, but there were ships. Which, as everybody knows, my favorite things in the world. So this is the drop ship. So it's got these little tiny feet. It's got these cargo containers and there's that great shot at the beginning of the movie and it even holds up today where they where one of these landers comes down and it lands and then it, as as the camera's zooming in and then these doors open up and then it's it's a composite shot and then they're actually the actors running out from the doors so it can hold a bunch of people it is not removable it's all one solid piece and again, these are these are standard micro machines size and scale, so they have the hole. And if you have the bases still around, you could put them on the base. Like so. Alright, so we have the dropship. We have the retrieval ship, which is even cooler. Love that design. So again, it's got a boxy troop compartment. It has like, it even has, they did like the struts where it would, where it would land and sort of sink down. It's got some guns. So yeah, this one's super cool. I wish they had more toys of this design because it's great. And then the TAC TAC fighter, which again, I don't know exactly who did the the mechanical designs for these, but they're so good. So obviously a dual seat fighter. Now this one as standard comes with landing gear, which is good, fine. Although again, if you have the display bases, which I had a million of these, uh, I don't I don't always love it when my toys that I want to display flying have unsightly landing gear. So on another one I had, I just cut it off and smoothed it out so I could have a flying version. Yeah. But again, all of these are super, super neat. Okay. So micro machine scale, right? Well, what's bigger than that? So then you have Move some bugs out. Now, unfortunately, I can't find my warrior bug in the next scale. One of them. I have it. I can see it in my mind. Don't know where they are. Ships and bugs. Yes. So anyway, so the next scale we have toys that are about this size. Now in this scale, we start to get 
articulation. And we get special action features. So this one, if you pull down on this claw right here, you shoot it and it explodes <laughs> with sculpted guts inside. Oh, Nerdy Duck, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> so this uh, Disciple of Fear, this is definitely not not a stream about VR troopers. <laughs> I don't have any VR troopers toys. So yeah, so this was kind of a cool action feature. It mostly goes back together. Oh, and then also a lot of these toys had... So here's some more guts down at the bottom. I don't know if you can see, but there is... Yeah, you can kind of see. Sculpted detail. And this is rubbery, so it actually kind of feels gross, like guts. So yeah, they definitely made these to be a little bit on the violent side. And again, there's there's one of these that's about two-thirds the size, and it's a battle-damaged version, so it's all broken up and green blood everywhere. But I can't find it for some reason. Yeah, what are you going to do? Now, what you'll start to see on these, on this scale, I don't really see it on this one except back here, is that there are a whole bunch of magnets on these toys. Uh, yeah, yeah, Disciple Fear. So these, this is the 1997 Galoob collection, all based on the movie. Yeah. I mean, you got to remember in the, in the late 80s and 90s, there, there were a fair amount of toys being made for even violent R-rated properties. Um, you know, there were RoboCop toys, you know, way back when. Okay, so what are the magnets for? Fortunately, because I don't have any of them with me, I can't find them. But the little tiny troopers had magnets in their feet or in their bases. Because if you remember in the movie, especially when it came to fighting this guy, how did Johnny defeat the tanker bug? He jumped on its back, shot a hole in it, and dropped a grenade inside. So you could have your little troopers swarming over these bugs to try to fight them. <laughs> Goofy, 100% yes. Uh, slightly unsightly when you have some of these magnets, yeah. But, you know, they were they were trying to include more... more playable stuff. Uh, but we're not at this scale yet. So again, like I said, I, I wish I had the smaller one because that's the, that's the scale we're really discussing right now, but I can't find it. So this is the, that scale. So again, you've got a magnet back here. Now there's a magnet underneath so it can be eating somebody, which is fun. And this one has, it has a ball joint here so it can be sort of skittering or rearing up. The front legs move the head. So again, like a lot of, try to include a lot of, and then these legs move also. So a lot of playability. There we go. Okay, yeah, I'm trying to keep my scales correct. So now clearly with the, you know, this would work more in scale than this one would. But, oh yeah, Star, oh my God, Starcom and their magnets were revolutionary. Okay, so in this size, we've got the, the warrior bug. We have a really cool hopper bug. This one has you can, all of these wings move a little bit. We've got a head twisting action. Come on. Well, maybe. It used to work anyway. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm gonna wind it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, there we go. Got him. 
Yeah, and this one, like, all of the legs are articulated. It's got the guts on the bottom, multiple magnets, magnet parts, so you can have guys fly onto it. Uh, let's see, does something else. There's a stinger that... Stinger does something back here. I can't remember. Little leg back here. So, yeah, lots of... Lots of action and activity in these toys. Even, everything is articulated on this one. You can see it's little eyes down here like a rhinoceros beetle. And yeah, just super bright, colorful, neat looking, neat looking thing. Uh, Disciple of Fear, yeah, these, these definitely, these are based on the, the color schemes in the movies, but everything in that movie was so desaturated So yeah, I don't think you got this much, necessarily this much color on screen. Although I don't know, I mean, if you saw like a, do they have this movie in 4K or whatever? There might be a restoration that that actually brings out all those colors. Yeah. So again, you can see the different the scales. Now there was they did make an even larger version of this that was remote controlled and why do i say it was remote controlled because it was literally a giant toy of this and it had a little controller that was attached by a cord that went into the toy and you press the button and it sort of lurched forward uh not not the coolest toy and definitely one that i did not seek out i'll show you a picture yeah so that's what that looks like again anytime you have a remote control where it's a cord attached that's not really a remote control toy <laughs> come on stream loads all right so we have the warrior, we have the hopper. Then we have the big tanker. <laughs> yeah, power power cord. So again, we get into this size, we get more action features. So this one has we've got a big big guts. See all sorts of sinews and fleshy bits inside. Still rubbery a little bit, squishy. Uh, a bunch of little legs. So the front four legs are articulated. Now this one has, you can see, it has a, a launching mechanism that you press here, and then it has a ratcheting device here to retract the weapon. But what I found out with the next bug I'll show you uh, is that these... <laughs> These have degraded over time, and I don't want to shoot them anymore because they it, it starts to break stuff. Little bits start falling out from inside. So I'm not going to shoot it for you, but essentially the projectile is attached to a ribbon that rewinds on the inside of the toy. So you get the idea. And again, uh, magnet for the little guys to jump on top. There's a magnet on top of the little projectile. Why is that support me thing popping up so much? I have to turn that off. But yeah, again, like I, I really love the design of this creature from the movie. So I have this. Always made sure to get all of the, the tanker bugs. Whoa! Put that one over. Uh, oh, you know what? We'll we'll do that next. So then we do have a. Ugh, just super gross, super gross brain bug. In this scale, it does have some articulation. You can move this, the front bulk of it around. And then this one also moves. And that's about it. Magnet on the back. There is a magnet here in the front. It's kind of disguised, so it doesn't stick out quite as much. 
so you could have a, one of the little troopers attached here so then it could suck its brains out uh disciple of fear all of these i've had since 97 i got all of these originally yeah yeah this thing is gross <laughs> The color is more correct on this one, the, the pinker color. But I got to say, I'm pretty impressed at the detail on the little one. All of these little these little uh, wrinkles and creases. I mean, it's just, it's so fleshy. It looks like it should be squishy, <laughs> but, it's, but it's not. Okay, so we've got the brain. Getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So here is the plasma bug. Now again, I'm going to be a little bit careful with this one because this is the one. So this obviously is a projectile. It shoots out, but like I said, it was it was not good when this shot out and I retracted it. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that, but there are a lot of uh, <laughs> lot of loose little bits inside from the. The springs for retracting it. So essentially, uh, this this like leaf kind of thing, you'd you'd ratchet that, and it would retract the projectile, and then launch it by this piece underneath. But yeah, this one has it has guts, it has magnets, so articulated head, um, a little bit of articulation in the legs, not quite as much because obviously it needs. It needs all those legs down at the bottom to be to stand up stable. Now, I never went back and looked, but I don't know if this if if in the movie the actual design has this sort of thing. Like I said, here this is the trigger to launch this, but they even put it on on the little one. So I don't know if that's original or if they just because it was on here they put it on here so it would look the same. But yeah, some some. Decent paint work on this one. Oh my god, Pandar! I, yeah, no, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it. And yes, uh, disciple, I was, I've been, I always loved toys, even as a kid, and I was definitely into collecting toys, and, and. Uh, I mean, I played with toys rough when I was little, but then I definitely wanted to keep my toys in, in good condition. You know, maybe, yeah, Cavalier, it seems like that could be something. I Like I said, it, it's been a while since I watched it, and these plasma bugs, they're not on screen very much. Uh, there's sort of that one iconic scene when they're firing, and then they're like, oh, we got to nuke them, and so they shoot a, one of their little tactical nukes down and blow them up. But yes. All right, so all of these, like I said, were sort of they try to have these in scale with the little tiny figures again so they could jump around on them and attack them and then we had the bigger remote control plasma bug there was also a room a quote-unquote remote control ship which i did not get kind of wish i did just it's not cool but yeah, again, it's another one of these power cord remote control things. So it's this design, and they just made a giant, super chunky version of it. And you can see the little picture there on the bottom right. It, I mean, it's probably trash. I think, just like the bug, I think this one just sort of hops forward. <laughs> It probably has the exact same inner mechanisms as the hopper bug did. Yeah, it's, it's not good. It's not good. <laughs> uh, remove. Uh, yeah, so for anybody who wasn't here right at the beginning, I'll here, let me show that real quick again. Yes, Galoob did make action figures, and they were terrible. I never got any. I don't regret it.
You know, Zardoz, I, I bet the missiles did not fire by remote control. I bet you still had to press a projectile launcher on the toy, but I, I don't know for sure. <laughs> yeah, so these were the, the action figures. And again, they're, they are trash. Trash. I wonder how much these go for. I'm sure there are collectors out there who love these things for for whatever. No, yeah, there was there was no attempt at scale with the uh with these. Remove remove. Okay, so I have one more bug. The most famous bug from this toy line. Let me prepare because it's a big boy. <laughs> Now this is definitely more in scale with, I mean, if you had a six inch action figure, it's probably be in a pretty good scale with it. Who do I, who do I have handy that I can grab? Hold on. So if we have like Shazam here, that's close to being a scale. I, it's so big. So actually, I moved the camera a little further away than I usually do for from my hobby streams. But even so, like trying to maneuver this thing around, it's pretty big. It's so nice. Now this thing has. It's articulated at the, what you could call a waist. It's articulated at the legs, articulated claws, the mouth. Now what was really awesome about this is it had electronics. So there's a button on the top that would make it, it would screech. And when you actually close this, it would make a crunching, chewing sound. Uh, it is, the batteries have long since run out. I should probably open it and take out the batteries. They're probably inside leaking. But, uh, but yeah, this thing is just super rad. <laughs> I love this bug. I usually have this on display somewhere up, up high so everybody can see it. Uh, yeah, this was the, uh, this was the Comic-Con exclusive Mattel, yeah, DCUC Shazam from uh some comic con long ago it just happened to be in the front of a case so i was able to grab it out easily so yeah this was the biggest bug they made man it would, how cool would it have been if they did more of the other bugs in this scale i wonder how much this costs originally that i have no recollection of or how big the box was for it Okay. Now, otherwise, there were a couple of other toys in the Galoob line. Uh, in the in the mini line, there was this thing. They called it they called it a pulse cannon. <clears throat> it was essentially like this weapon turret that you could. Oh, and there you can see some of the little tiny figures. This it, they're micro machine scale figures and again they did these little figures for star wars and other things um again this this gun whatever it is was not in the movie so i don't know if this was just a design they had lying around and we're like hey we could turn the, we could slap the starship troopers name on it and sell it to people uh i did not purchase this i don't know if i ever even actually saw it And then there were a couple of other versions of the the TAC fighter. They did one that was bigger. I think I think they did one of these in an action figure scale where you could actually put a figure into uh, a single cockpit. It wasn't big enough where you could put two, but I think there was one where you could put one. 
but in that scale it just it did not look nearly as cool as the micro machine one not nearly as accurate to the design from the movie so i never got that one but yeah that takes us through all of the galoob toys remove but we're not done because later so Yamato is a company that you, if you know Japanese toys, you may know Yamato. Yamato has an American branch called Yamato USA. They do primarily uh, statues, higher end collectibles. Some of them are really cool. For some reason, and I don't know why this was, but they got into the Starship Troopers game. And they made four items. One of them is from the is more from the book rather than from the movie. And so this is and Rabbit Woman, I think you've talked about this before. There's there's an anime there's an anime version of the book that's much more accurate as far as like the designs of the power armor, things like that. So they made this guy, which is really, really cool. And again, this is mostly metal. It weighs a ton. It has a bunch of articulation, including working pistons. So when you move the part, actually the pistons move inside. Let's see back here. Oh, that one's a good one to see. It has the, the I forget what they call it, the cross, but essentially it's, it's, four, it's four Merida's all in a crosswise oh is this from the it's not from the live action because it's older than when they started adding those oh maybe not this is 2008 oh i guess this isn't as old as i thought it was um ball joints here in the arms and again it's power armor but the pilot would sit completely enclosed in the center section uh, so again it, it straddles the line between power armor and a small robot so clearly the arm the arms of the pilot do not go into the arms here it's just a weapon mount guns on the top but yeah this thing is neat it's got the little oh yeah no no that is the the movie movie symbol well there you go learn something new every day um, Undead Saints fan sent me a link. Let's see what this is. Oh, right, right. That's the one. No, yeah, I don't, I don't, I never got that one. That one's cool. I should have, I should have picked that one up. Bad science fiction movies, for sure. So this thing is cool. Again, trying to get into more of the, the, the tech from the book. But what's more exciting is we have spaceships. So here we have the TAC fighter. So yeah, I'm not I'm not too upset because I don't have that larger one because I have this one, which is much more detailed. They came with these really nice fancy bases. They are numbered, so this is 103 of only 300. Again, this is metal. It is very heavy, but it is super, super detailed. Very well done. Even They even painted the bottom, which is always nice, <laughs> which doesn't always happen. So yeah, this thing is just great. Very cool. Now I was lucky very lucky. So I've I've been doing toy reviews for figures.com for many, many years. And at the time these came out, these spaceships, this one and the next two that I'm going to show you, uh, Yamato USA was really interested in getting the word out about these. And so they sent me all three of them as review samples. So I got these for free. Did Obviously did really good reviews on them and have 
kept them in my collection to this day. Yeah, I mean, we've got the little cannon. So this one is neat. Very, very happy with this one. Put that right there. So then we get the hero spaceship from the movie. Whoa, knock that down. Roger Young. I'm going to move that out of the way. They just they just rest on the bases. They don't attach in any way. This one is not numbered. I don't know if this is because it was the first one and they just didn't add it yet. Or it was... Sometimes when you get review samples, they're part of the, the limited edition. Sometimes they're sort of outside of the edition numbers. It just depends. So I don't know... But anyway, this one doesn't have a, doesn't have a number on it. But yeah, this thing is super detailed. The top of these engine pods, they're they just sort of rest on there. So if I'm gonna turn it around, but yeah, this thing is just like ridiculously detailed. Yeah, this is the Roger Young. Which is also the, it is the name of the ship from the book. But yeah, I mean, just like every centimeter of this thing is detailed. It's pretty rad. I'm sure somewhere there are schematics of these ships so you could figure out what all the parts are. This cool little, this little bridge. So the underside is also is fully detailed. The little turrets. Some of these turrets are really spiky, so you gotta watch out where you hold it. Number one, you don't want to poke yourself. You also don't want to break off any of these little tiny pieces. Now, if you're familiar with the movie. You'll know that when the bugs start their full scale attack, they launch, uh, what is it? Basically the bugs push asteroids. I don't know, whatever it was. So, when, and that affected, so the Roger Young is the first to pick it up and it actually breaks off this piece as they're trying to duck underneath the asteroid. So Yamato USA said, hey, we're gonna sell out of this one pretty quickly because it's a limited edition. We'll make another one. With a different tower on it. So this is the Starship Troopers Roger Young alternate radio tower version. And this is 195 out of 1000. So this one is numbered. So again, it is the same ship, but a different, they call it a radio tower here. Now again, this one, it, these are kind of, they're kind of a cross between a, a statue and a finished model. So some of these do have some loose parts. So again, like I said, these little engines, and I could glue them down, but when they're on display, they're fine. But if I'm moving them around and this one is removable. But yeah, overall it's the same. I think it's the same sculpt, just with a different piece there. That crunched a little bit more than I'd like. So yeah. The color is a little bit different, but essentially the same. It's obviously just different, different, slightly different grays. Hey, Charlie. Yeah, there is, there is space travel. They go to a couple different bug worlds in the movie. So yeah, so that is, that is my Starship Troopers collection. Um, like I said, I, I super love spaceships, so I'm really glad to have these. Uh, these are, like I said, they're long out of print. 
I looked them up a little a little while ago, and these these go for a fair amount of money because they are pretty cool. Yeah, the bugs figure out ways of sort of launching their their plasma and their spores across space. So they actually come and well, yeah, and and of course in the book, yeah, it's uh, it's different. <laughs> different things going on they are right they're 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 kind of they're mostly mindless in the movies but except for the brain bugs but they are able to do to interact with their environment in all sorts of different ways wow that giant this giant bug was only 20 dollars in 97 that's crazy it's huge with electronics and everything Oh, now I should say, I don't have any of them, but the other, the only other major Starship Troopers uh, thing that's out there is that there was a Starship Troopers miniatures game made by Mongoose, which I've talked about a lot lately. Uh, metal miniatures, you know, little itty bitty ones. Uh just like a lot of stuff that Mongoose got into, they had the license for a couple of years. They they made a bunch of stuff, and then they lost the license suddenly. Um, I've never played that game. I don't have any of the miniatures. A friend of mine has some of them. Apparently, the game is fun. You can still get the the human miniatures for not too much of a of a price gouge, but all of the bugs, especially the the warrior bugs, are hideously expensive just because they're really cool even in in model form uh but i hear that there are companies out there who make their own versions of these that are not licensed but are a lot cheaper and of course you know 3d printing is a thing uh the companies send you yeah so that, that, good question about reviews. So like I said, I, I've I've done reviews for figures.com as well as convention coverage and attending special events for a whole bunch of years now. And the we would always tell we always tell the companies like we, we're gonna do honest reviews. Now, do I do negative reviews? No. Am I just shilling for these companies? Not exactly. What I do when I when I review toys, and like I said, I've reviewed I've reviewed a lot of toys over the years. Uh, I'm the, out of the figures.com staff, I'm the second most, well, I've, I, I have the second most reviews of, of anybody there after the, the editor who runs the site. My whole thing is when I review a toy or a collectible or a statue, whatever it is, is I'm looking for the right audience for it because somebody there's always somebody who's going to like something no matter what it is, right? So if I'm reviewing a toy that looks cool, but as soon as you start to move it around, it falls to pieces. Well, if it looks cool, that's going to, that is going to appeal to potentially a statue collector or somebody who just wants to put something up on a shelf, put it behind glass and never touch it again. Clearly it's not going to be good for, you know, younger audiences who want to play with toys or older people who want to play with toys. And things like that. So I'm always looking for who is this going to appeal to. Um, I'll point I'll point out flaws for sure, but it's I'm typically not doing yeah like I said I'm typically not doing negative reviews. Uh, I have though I have done negative reviews for things that I've purchased and was wildly disappointed in. <laughs> that I that I've done in the past. Um, but yeah, I mean, when when companies send us stuff, there's no expectation that what we're that what we're gonna say is completely glowing. It's not like it's not it's not that much of a quid pro quo. Um, also, I mean, these the they in general the companies don't really care that much. They just want more content out there that's linking back and just more buzz, even if it's negative, because even that can help toy sales. Uh, but yeah, that's sort of how I look at it. It works for me. 
Ooh, a marathon of all the Starship Troopers movies. Oh man, that would be rough because yeah, the the live action sequels were so bad, and then the animated ones have they have their moments, but uh they have some really bad moments too. That would be an interesting movie marathon. And what kind of uh, what kind of drinking game or you know whatever you're into to get to get through those? That would be fun. But yeah, generally with my reviews, I focus on just getting a lot of really good photography. Uh, I don't do I don't do video. I'm just I'm not really set up for it. And I'm not really interested in. I've never really liked toy review videos. It's just not my thing. But um, yeah, so I do a lot of really good. Really good photography for toys. I I know how to do it the right way (laughs) that makes people like to look at it and toy companies happy because there are definitely ways you can photograph toys that are not flattering. And so I make sure I don't do that. And then, yeah, I just talk about, I talk about all the technical stuff, you know, size, what the articulation is, what accessories it comes with, how well everything works, and then just what I like about it. Because obviously I'm a toy guy and I like all sorts of different kinds of toys yeah, I can talk about toys forever. I'm actually in the middle of doing some toy reviews. For some reason, there are several companies. I mean, obviously, it's because the holidays are coming up and there are no big toy shows. So they are looking to get the word out. But um, a bunch of toy companies recently reached out offering review samples. So I've got some stuff in the works. End of this week, beginning of next week. So I'll share all those links. Have a... <laughs> Uh, yes, Pandar, I have seen the movie Toys. It's been a very long time. I don't remember it. Uh, don't remember a lot. Rabbit Wombat, you get that Dark Crystal talk out of here. That is nonsense. We're not doing that. <laughs> Come on, you apes. You want to live forever? Oh, and then... Um, there was also there's also the Starship Troopers animated series, which was really good in terms of story and characters and oh my god, talk about they took this universe and it and just blew it up with all of these really cool different armor designs and vehicle designs and just so much stuff. Unfortunately, they they really tried. They tried their best with the animation, you can tell. But, oh my god. Yeah, the Roughnecks animated series. But wow, that animation just does not hold up. It's rough to watch that now. It's really... It's it's a good show if you can get past the way the animation looks. But, um, yeah, some of it's hard to watch. And there is... So, like I, I said that Mongoose made a... Starship Troopers miniatures game. A lot of that is based on the the Roughnecks. And then they also made a Starship Troopers role-playing game series. And there were a few books for that. And uh, that was really cool. And again, using designs and things from the series. Oh, Zardoz, you have some of the minis. And how are they? They're metal. They're all metal, right? I think they were all metal. I don't know. Yeah, reboot. It. I mean, sort of the whole point of it is that we're yeah we're CG. I I liked Beast Machines. I'm one of the few people I think who liked it. But yeah, that that's that early CG stuff is. It's a little rough. Oh, they did do plastic. Okay, that's cool. Cool, cool. In pulling all of these things out, I did come across a couple other things I wanted to briefly show. Speaking of split infinitives, so I found my oldest Star Trek toy. This is a, technically it is a Klingon warship, and this is made from the toy company Corgi. I don't know how many people here are familiar with it. It's a company in England. So it even says, made in Great Britain. Don't have a lot of toys that say that. It's toys from 
1982, so it's a little bit younger than I am by a couple of years. Uh, it has a, f a fair amount of paint wear on it. It's it's metal with just this little plastic piece on top. I don't know where they got the color scheme for this. I don't even think this was from the animated series, but maybe I don't know. It's just and like with the K for Klingon. I don't I don't know. <laughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like I said, I've I've had this since I was a wee lad. I think my dad brought it back from somewhere. I don't know. But yeah, I was in a box where I had to go and dig these guys out. So I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so so re found that. And then oh, and then when I was digging out the the larger of the bugs. So these bugs are in a big old box that is mostly my Godzilla toys that are not on display. And oh my God, I forgot just how many Godzilla toys I have <laughs> and how cool they are. So one day I'd love to bring all that out. But um, if you remember a few, I don't know, weeks ago, a month ago, um, I went over all of my Halo drop pod-like things. But I found, and I knew, I had a feeling that there were more that I couldn't remember where they were. And I found them. So these were another set of, again, drop pod toys from the Halo series. Pop open, you can see the little, little dude in there. There's a bunch of weapons. Uh, the, I love drop pod things. We've got a silver one, a greenish one. And then you can do different things with the top, like this. And then this one where it's heat scorched from coming into the atmosphere, which is super, super fun. And I left the guys inside because I don't, I don't care. I think they can sort of like pop apart. But yeah, drop pod things are neat. Uh, catching up on question, not enough Godzilla toys. I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of Godzilla toys. When I was in was it grad school or regular college, I forget. But there was a lady that I found online who imported Godzilla stuff directly from Japan and had them for really good prices. And I bought a lot. A lot, a lot. Do I have an Ultraman Godzilla toy? Um, no, I have a couple of Ultraman toys around, but not a lot. I, I never got into that franchise very much. Oh, that, that sucks for Ivan. Yikes. Ugh, that's awful. Yeah, we, we hear stories every so often of armies getting stolen or, or you know, or... Thieves or burglars will take, you know, all these cases and then find out what's in them and then just smash them and, yeah. That sucks. I am definitely sorry to hear that. But yeah, one day, one day I'll do a, I'll do a Godzilla thing. Because most of my Godzilla toys are, are in the small range. Um, I have some of the. I don't know. You can't really tell what <laughs> the size I'm going. I have a couple of larger scale ones, but a lot, like I said, a lot of mine, I love the small toys. So I have a ton of small scale Godzilla figures, mostly, you know, like directly from Japan. I can definitely do that one day. Like I said, most of them are just in a box. So I can bring the box over and just pull stuff out directly. Oh yeah. And after today, I got a lot to put away. What Pandar says, it's a tie-in with Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Interesting. Yeah, it's just great, that blue color. Cool. Well, thank you, Pandar. Uh, 
Godzilla toys are such a... Oh, man. If you get into Godzilla toys, not only have they been making Godzilla toys forever, since forever, but, um, yeah, there are a whole bunch of stuff that, you know, that are essentially, like, retail toys that you can get or that originally were relatively inexpensive. Then there are... There are so many collector toys out there for for Godzilla up to, you know, things that are thousands and thousands of dollars. It's crazy. I don't have any, like I said, I don't have any Godzilla stuff that's super gigantic or that was particularly rare. I don't think, I don't know. Yeah. Corgi is super cool. Um, I think, oh no, I do have, hold on, hold on one second. Let me grab the other. So I've shown these before, but my other, my only other Corgi toy is from Buck Rogers. Whoa, that doesn't like how much light I have on it right now. Uh, there are details on there. It's just <laughs> the light is completely blowing it out. So this says Buck Rogers Starfighter. This is from 1980, so it's even older. And it has a little, so it actually still works. The wings move a little bit. I'm not going to jam it too far. And for safety reasons, there's this bar across the front that did not exist in the actual design of this spaceship. It just had the two pointy ends, uh, but they had to do that so kids wouldn't poke their eyes out. Yeah, there's a little sticker. Actually, I have two of these that are in pretty good condition. Yeah, but like I said, I think I think these are the only Corgi toys that I have. Buck Rogers is so great. I've shown my Buck Rogers stuff before. I don't have because I've got this the. There's somebody who just came out with a a resin model of the Buck Rogers Starfighter. It's like seven hundred dollars or something insane. It's uh, I I think it's technically studio scale, but when you build it, it's like sixteen inches or something. So my only other Buck Rogers stuff is I've got two things that are kind of interesting. So one, I found this really random, I don't know where, I don't even know where I put the thing. It's like, um, it's like a full, it's like a play mat that folds up into a vehicle and it, it, it it's like totally generically sci-fi, but it is apparently, it's from Battlestar Galactica and it came with a couple of plastic pieces that were almost like like board game pieces. Oh, Buck Rogers, so good. Hey, Cameron. Uh, so anyway, but from that, it had... Oh, man, my lights, my lights are bright on the white. But uh, it had this... Now, again, like, the proportions <laughs> are interesting. It is the same... Does, how do I... I don't know where to put this, but... Uh, yeah, so this one it has copyright information on here. It says HG Toys out of New York, made in Hong Kong, 1979. So this is, again, it does have some details. Not a lot, but it does have some details. As old as I am. But then an even better one, though, is this one. Now, sadly... This was once white. Uh, it has yellowed quite dramatically. <laughs> it has this little tiny, it's not a projectile. It doesn't actually shoot out. It just sort of pokes out. 
like that. Still works. The spring still works, which is kind of amazing. Um, again, like not exactly on model, but certainly closer than this one. More of a kid's toy. It's got little rolly wheels. And this one is 1978. So this is one of the few toys I have that's older than me. Uh, Fleetwood Toys, again, out of New York, made in Hong Kong. The bottom of it has a little bit more white. I don't know if you can see. But yeah, the, the top is, is completely yellow. <laughs> There are some ways to try to treat toys that have yellowed, but uh, from what I've seen, it's it, it's dangerous to the toy. You can actually break down the plastic. Um, you know, it's funny, though, Zardoz, that a lot of the yellowing happens whether it's exposed to sunlight or not. It's just, uh, it's just part of the material in the white plastic. It just breaks down over time and turns yellow. I have some toys that are, you know, that are white toys where only parts of it have turned yellow, but not the rest of it. And again, because clearly like, you know, when you have a, I don't have any action. Oh, here. It's so like different parts of an action figure will actually be, you know, different plastic in different pieces. And it, they break down at different rates. But yeah, so those are my Battlestar Galactica, or my Battlestar Galactica, my Buck Rogers. Battlestar Galactica. That's a whole other thing I could, I could talk about. Yeah, storm the old, the old stormtroopers turning yellow for sure. All right, cool. Well, I should I should stop myself before I go on too many other tangents. It's easy to do. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed looking at some bugs, some spaceships my Starship Troopers stuff, and a little bit more. Go on all the tangents. I know I could I could talk about this crap all day long. Um, speaking of talking about things and crap, I'll be back tomorrow to talk about Warhammer. Cool. I'm, I'm glad people liked it. Yeah, I do. I have a pretty good collection of this, the Starship Troopers stuff. I'm a fan. So yeah, back tomorrow for Warhammer, and I think that's it. I'm going to go put all this stuff away, <laughs> or at least try to. Some of it has places to go. Others might have to go back in the box for now. Back in the box with you. All right, well, have a good rest of your day. Don't get your brain sucked out by bugs, even fleshy, squishy ones. It sucked his brains out classic and yeah i forget who said it but neil patrick harris is always great love that guy so so good in the uh harold and kumar movies yeah we got some cool soaps out there Your, your character will be getting a parasite in his brain. Well, they, hey, look, there you go. It all it all comes back together. Oh, Panda Air Soaps arrived Friday. Awesome, awesome. Oh, I hope you enjoy them. Yeah, we've been sending out a ton of packages. We got a lot of a lot of good sales. Uh, cool. All right. Well, have a good one, everybody. That's gonna do it for me today. I will be back tomorrow. Go make sure you follow all the home buddies and watch all their streaming. Hey, Demon Blind, welcome. As I leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.